Have you ever played Celeste? No? Well, I have. And one of the main things that game is praised for is its movement. But while everyone talks about a dash, one of the most overlooked aspects of the game is its run. My goal for this video is to implement the running, where not only do you have control over the max speed, but the acceleration and deceleration curves as well. We'll also be implementing the jump for our character, because why not? If you want full details on Celeste's movement, make sure to check out Game Maker's Toolkit video on why the Celeste feels so good to play, link in the description. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to be pausing the video a lot, so make sure you pay close attention to everything I do in this video. Now let's get started, shall we? Alright, first things first, create your project and give it a cool name. Now set up your scene, create a sprite for the player and one for the ground, attach a box collider 2D to both objects, and a rigid body 2D to the player only. Next, you wanna take that rigid body 2D and make sure that shit is dynamic. Set collision detection to continuous for some reason, and freeze the zero rotation under constraints. And now when we test our game, the player can fall because of gravity. Next, create and add your movement script to the player. First, we're going to create the three variables that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Movement acceleration, max move speed, and linear drag, which was called deceleration. Keep that shit organized. Place a header attribute and name it movement variables. Next, serialize it. Since I don't want these variables being public, I'll make them private and serialized so we have access to their values in the inspector. Next, make a variable for the rigid body 2D. Then declare our private float variable and name it horizontal direction. This will store our horizontal input value. Then we're gonna get the input inside the update function. But you don't actually want to get your input like this, select that and extract it into a function. We'll need the vertical input as well, eventually. We'll make this return a vector 2 with the horizontal and vertical inputs. Then you'll get an error. Wait, you'll get an error? To fix it, simply make it return a vector 2 instead of a float. And here in the horizontal direction, just add dot x and you're good to go. Next, we'll need the function to move our character. Then call it inside the fixed update. Don't forget to assign the rigid body at start. Before you start testing, make sure the values on these variables are set. And now when we test, his speed is uncontrollable. But fear not! We just have to clamp the velocity once he reaches max speed. Great! Now we have controllable speed. But it still feels like we're walking on ice. That's why we have to apply linear drag which is our deceleration variable. Don't forget to call it in the fixed update. And if we test it now, cool, he feels controllable now. It's hard to notice, but he kind of slides when he's changing directions. To fix this, we'll need to add a private bool called changing direction. If we write it like this, it will constantly be assigning a value given this condition. If we're moving right and we press left, it becomes true and vice versa. And now it's looking much better. Alright, now let's code the jump. First, declare a private float and call it jump force. Then, we'll check if the player has pressed the jump button inside the update function. If he has, we'll call our jump function. Inside the jump function, we set our y velocity to zero, then apply an immediate force to the character, making it jump. When we test, we can see two problems. First, he falls slowly to the ground, and he can jump as many times as he wants. First, let's fix the infinite jumps. This will take a while. For this, we'll have to create a layer mask to check if we're grounded or not. We'll be using raycast to check for ground. So, we can declare a float for the raycast length and a boolean called onGround. Then, we'll create a function to check our collisions and we'll be using a raycast here from the player position to the ground and for visual purposes we'll draw gizmos. Now back in the update function we'll also check if the player is grounded before jumping and we can grab this and insert it into a bool called can jump and we'll check it in the fixed update rather than the update function. Don't forget to check collisions in the fixed update function. Then assign the ground raycast length variable. Make sure the raycast sticks out a little bit below the character's feet. Then you want to create and add a ground layer mask. Then assign it to the ground. 
And if you're not an idiot like me, you're gonna want to leave the ground layer variable serialized. Then assign the ground layer mask you created before. And now when we test, great, no more infinite jumps. Now we're gonna need more air control for our character. For this, we have to apply aerolinear drag. Then we'll check if we're grounded. If we are, then we call the apply linear drag function. If we're not grounded, then we call our new function called apply aerolinear drag. We'll rename these to apply ground linear drag and ground linear drag for convenience. Now, to fix the slow falling, I watched this video by board to beats games titled Better Jumping with Four Lines of Code and they bamboozle you over there. It's not actually four lines of code, it's actually more. Basically, it boils down to these two variables and this function. Don't forget to call it in the fixed update. Nice. This will take too long for me to discuss in this video, so you might as well watch it from the video I learned from. Now, let's say you want double jump, triple jump, or maybe even quadruple jump. For that, you'll have to create two variables, extra jump, which will define how many times you can double jump, and extra jump value which will keep track of how many double jumps remain. We're gonna reset the extra jump value every time he's on the ground. And inside the update function, we'll check if he's not grounded. If he's not, we decrement the extra jump value. Next, we'll update the can jump property. Now, we'll check if the player pressed the jump button and if he's grounded or has enough extra jumps. Now you can double jump, triple jump, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, sextuple, before you go, you might encounter this problem when you jump, where the player can stick to walls. That's not supposed to happen. To fix it, simply create a 2D physics material, name it something like slippery or whatever, and set friction and bounciness to zero. Then add this material to the rigid body 2D component on the player, and now no more clipping to walls. Awesome. And another thing, I made a slight mistake. We actually want to call our jump function inside the update and not fixed update. After testing it inside the fixed update, sometimes the jump was unresponsive, so normal update is better. The final product. After adjusting some values on the transform component and the script, I was able to achieve this. I'm pretty happy with the results. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Great job! Now you can move properly in your game. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. I actually thought this video was going to be longer. I even wanted to separate the running and jumping into their own videos, but... Nah. Join me next time where I'll be setting up the animations for our character, because it's not fun moving a cube around, is it? Is it? Also, if you want the latest version of this script, there will be a link in the description to my GitHub page. You can find this script and eventually... Uh, and eventually even more scripts. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, as it will really help me out.